Solar Builders 2021 Utility Scale Project of the Year is the 4.2 megawatt system at the Rockport Macy's Pond in Rockport, Maine. This dual-use solar project was built on a farm in order to improve the yield of a wild blueberry crop. Here to tell us all about it is Stephen Campbell, Managing Director at Navison, Alan Robertson, Managing Director of Solar Development for Blue Wave Solar, and Tom Milos, Senior Project Manager for CS Energy. This was a project we also featured in our big uh, agrivoltaics article uh, back in the summer or spring, I don't remember which. Agrivoltaics is a newer, exciting field of study and project development for solar. H how did this all start? Yeah, so to your point, agrivoltaics is relatively new in the solar space. So typically how it starts is we've got to beat the drum. We are the ones that have to kind of sell. The reason why Rockport was slightly different is the landlord, the landowner in this case, David Dickey, really wanted to see the blueberries uh, remain on, on the site, which is helpful because like I'd said, it, usually it's a little lumpy on uh, on convincing the landlord this is the right thing to do, that it might be a little more complicated because we're going to be a tenant, but we're also going to be a landlord because we're going to have a farmer as a subtenant. So luckily uh, he was bought in from the get-go as well. Did you have any idea what the potential benefits of mounting solar above a wild blueberry crop could possibly be? Yeah, in, in conjunction with uh, sort of our, our head of sustainability, Drew Pearson, um, we also work with New England Consulting Services. So uh, uh, with Ian Ian Ward specifically, who is the you know founder and owner, the hypothesis at the, at the, at the onset was when you cover a crop, they tend to, to, to be a little more resilient. You're, 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 you're sheltering them from the elements, from wind, from uh, from sun, and in particular in the state of Maine, you've been seeing these crops dry out. And the more we we dug in with our consultants, and the more we dug in with the University of Maine, we realized that there's actually might be something real, uh, some substantial here. And then we 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 talked to the farmer who's been farming this uh, this project for this parcel for quite some time, Paul Sweetland, and he said, Yeah, yeah, I think you've got you've got something here. Steve, <laughs> uh, uh, curious, you know, is this Navison's first agrivoltaics? project in the portfolio? Yeah, sure, Chris. It, it is our first agrivoltaic project. We've had a long-standing relationship with both CS Energy and with Blue Wave. And when Blue Wave first came to pitch it to us, we immediately got interested. You know, we are a long-term owner operator that we really love to feel like we're part of the fabric of the community in the towns and, and townships that we own our assets. The other aspect is we we take the environmental stewardship about this whole industry really to heart. You know, we we want to to do interesting things to maintain the environmental stewardship, to make these sites not just clearing of of trees and then just putting up solar panels. We want to look at interesting ways of doing this. All three parties went into this eyes wide open, wanting it to be a successful project. So that partnership ultimately showed and, and, you know, showed out great at the end of it. Tom, how did you actually install this system? Um, and, you know, I just wanted you to maybe highlight some of the nuances, differences, you know, starting with kind of the site prep. The, the site was, was given to us in, in, in a hole and, and cordoned off into three separate work zones. One was very careful, uh, which only allowed us to cover the blueberries and work on them with track vehicles and on foot. The other was careful, which was we could use track vehicles, but they could only go backward and forward. They could not turn. And then there was the third, which was the largest section, was just do construction as, as you normally would. So the hard part initially was trying to figure out what we could use to allow the, the vehicles to go in and out of the very careful area without disrupting the underbrush. So some ideas were put forward um, using plywood, uh, but we were using track vehicles, uh, drill rigs, which were going to be very heavy, and that would have really tore up the, uh, the plywood. We ended up using nylon, four by eight, uh, almost three quarter inch thick uh, nylon um, mats, matting, to protect the underbrush. Once the contractors understood what they could and couldn't do, they they stuck. Uh, I think the terrain was more difficult to work with than than the blueberry field. It ultimately worked and it was a successful project because we spent a month prior to setting a foot on the ground coordinating logistics, figuring out what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it, and really having a plan in place before we, like I said, before we even put our foot on the ground. It was really 
pleasantly shocking to see a, a blueberry construction plan binder in the CS Energy trailer about maybe three inches thick. That's something you don't normally see on a solar project. So what adjustments did you have to make to the actual racking, the mounting, um, any part of the design of the, the system? We had to to commit to a few different variables ahead of time. So what general type of racking do we want to use? Uh, what inter-row spaces? We had to have a general scope and scale of how we were going to do this. And unlike other states, I'll pick on Massachusetts, which have dual-use agrivoltaics incentives. They said they'll pay you more per you know, unit of energy produced if it is a dual-use project. We didn't have that luxury in Maine. So we couldn't put this thing seven feet, eight feet off the ground like we would normally do in a, to, to, to accommodate the farming activity. To be honest, the leading drip edge on this, on this array, so like the lowest part of the module is about four feet off the ground, which would have been the, the height. So we didn't have to make any adjustments there. Another site-specific variable that worked in our favor is this whole array is on the side of a hill, which is conducive to, to wild Maine blueberries. And that hill happened to be tilting towards the south. So we were able to get the arrays a little closer together than we, we typically do. The other thing I'll say is to just go back to the collaboration aspect of this, understanding what Paul Sweetland and the underlying farmers were going to do on a long-term basis helped us un understand what we could do and what we could use as design criteria. The Blue Wave team is, is constructing their own kind of add-on to an ATV to help accommodate um, the, the future uh, picking of the blueberries, which was worked into the, the you know, the row to row spacing so that we, everybody understood how much we had and what we needed to do and what that ATV was going to, to, to be. We, we ended up, we're going to put up a lot of signage where we're kind of cordoning off the medium voltage gear with with fencing, so that if a if a farmer does stray away, they're not going to get really into the high high medium voltage stuff. So there's all these little pieces that came to together as we work through it. Do you know if the maintenance plans for the site are more or less involved? There's some stuff that's the same, and then there's stuff that is different. And ultimately, it, it, it is going to cost a little bit more, but not a whole lot more. There's a lot more reporting. It's a lot more checking in. One of the things that people forget about solar plants is they are actually power plants. So ultimately, safety is of the utmost concern here. Usually, we don't let anybody except for our O&M providers on the site within the fence. And, you know, Paul Sweetland and his team is going to be out there taking care of the bushes and then going out and, and looking at crops. So we developed a pretty robust farming plan with Blue Wave that we had our say in from an owner's operating perspective. And then Alan and, and the Blue Wave team got in there and helped us with understand what Paul was going to be looking for from the, the actual operation and production of the farm underneath it. Do you know when you might be able to report on, hey, here's how well the, the crop went and here's what we learned from what we've put in the ground? Dr. Calderwood and her team um, have already installed the different sensors that are going to compile uh, uh, all, the, uh, all the data that will be impactful and, and, and really tell the story about how much the, pro the, the crop yield didn't change, increased, decreased uh, across the different construction areas and the different um, mo uh, solar module types. Uh, that story is still being told. The one thing that we can all point to right now is the fact that there are there were blueberries growing there post construction. So that was a shock. So again, congrats, and uh, you know, just Thanks, good luck Chris. on hopefully doing more of these types of projects going forward. I think they're awesome for the industry, and hopefully, you know, maybe the future of the, the planet <laughs> overall.